You know what? I'm done with these light matches to start off the Real Juniors. No more Boxing Day matchups against Denmark, Germany, Slovakia. No more Canada winning 7, 8, 10, nothing on Boxing Day. Give me those big name matchups. Canada, US, Boxing Day to start off the Real Juniors. Inject it into my veins. Canada opens up the 2020 World Juniors with a 6 to 4 win over the United States. That game was fantastic. This whole day of games for the World Junior Championship was fantastic. I don't think I've ever seen such a fantastic, amazing start to a World Junior Championship as I have this year, as I have today. Canada beats the US six to four in just a back and forth arms race, reminiscent of the Leafs Hurricanes game a couple days ago. This was just back and forth, each team taking turns of just dominating the game offensively, and it just led to an absolutely incredible game. Early on in the first, Canada captain Barrett Hayden gets called for a penalty pretty much right away, and Shane Pinto of the stakes tips in the shot from the point to put the U.S. up 1-0. And for the majority of the first period, the U.S. seemed to be controlling the game. Canada had a rough start to this one, didn't get very many shots off in the first period. The U.S. jumped out to, I think, a 6 or 7 nothing shot lead right off the bat. And near the end of the period, the U.S. on another power play, Arthur Kaliev buries a nice move from Zegras, and it's a 2-0 game for the United States going into the second period. But second period, you could tell something was different from Canada. You could tell they were playing a bit stronger. They were ready for it. Came out fourth line shift. Good grinding plays. Akeel Thomas gets it over to Connor McMichael, who scores to bring Canada back within one and you could just feel that the Canadian team was ready to go for the second period. They got a goal early off, and this second period really was when we saw a Canada team that's the Canada team that you expect to see at the World Juniors. Dominating the play, being the stronger team, this second period gave me so much more hope for what this team can accomplish this tournament. Because about three minutes after that goal, about six minutes into the period, Canada gets a power play. Dylan Cousins wins the faceoff. Back to Alexis Lefreniere, this 18-year-old who's expected to go first overall next draft. Gets it over to Hayden, who just one times it in, ties the game at 2-2. And the Canada power play, which was garbage last year, I think they were 5 for 19 in the tournament, gets a goal early on in the first game. And about midway through the period, again Canada's on the power play, Ty Smith gets it over to Nolan Foote, who just rockets a shot over Spencer Knight's shoulder, and Canada takes their first lead of the game up 3-2. And again, Canada, fantastic second period, just dominated the play physically, got three goals unanswered, and really just took control of that game in the middle frame. Third period, Canada on the power play again, Joe Valino, on the sideboards, gets it to Alexi Lafreniere, who cuts into the middle, deeks through two American defenders, draws all four Americans right to him, right in the middle. He gets it out to Hayden, who one times it in wide open and scores to give Canada a two goal lead. What a play by Lafreniere on that goal. He had a game, and Canada is up by two. But not that long after that. U.S. going into the zone, Nick Robertson does a great little toe drag pull in, gets a little bit of a shot off, kind of reminiscent of an Austin Matthews shots, and brings the U.S. within one. Yeah, Nick Robertson, as a Canada fan, I was very scared of him, but as a Leafs fan, damn boy, I am excited to see Nick Robertson continue to develop. He had a fantastic game this one. That goal was just fantastic, like absolutely incredible, great move, great shot. He has 23 goals in 22 games for the Peterborough Peaks this year. He's just an elite talent and I'm so excited to see him continue to develop. Four minutes left in the period, the US is on the power play. They get it down to Nick Robertson in the corner who just slides in front to a wide open Shane Pinto at the far post and he just taps in an easy goal to tie the game and it looks like Canada is falling apart. The U.S. crawled their way back into this game when it looked like Canada took it over. Props to them. And it is a tied 
4-4 game with just over three minutes left in the third period. And then on the face-off following that U.S. goal. The Americans win the draw. Back with their left defenseman, Dylan Cousins is pressuring him. This defenseman tries to saucer pass it across to his other D, Alexi Lafreniere, in between the hash marks, knocks the puck out of midair, and then un- dresses Spencer Knight, tucks the puck in left post, and Alexi Lafreniere, holy, what a goal, this guy is legit. And Canada takes a 5-4 lead. And from then on, Canada is able to hold on. Deliandra adds an empty netter, assisted by Lafreniere, and Canada wins the game 6-4. to four. This game was everything I loved about the World Juniors. High scoring, highly physical, crazy offensive plays, defenders making mistakes which lead up these crazily talented, gifted offensive players to just do what they do best. This right here was a classic World Juniors game, and it was a fantastic way, on top of the other three games today, which were all great, to start off this tournament. Barrett Hayden scoring two goals, always important for the Canada captain to get a couple in the first game, get himself going right off the bat. Alexi Lafreniere, last year he came to the World Juniors as a 17 year old, but as a 17 year old he wasn't draft eligible for two drafts, which is incredibly rare to see someone playing for Canada two years before their draft year. And he had one goal, and that was it in five games. Wasn't incredible. I think it was kind of obvious that he wasn't quite ready for the World Juniors yet. This game, he had four points already against the United States. Not a slouch of a team. He was Canada's MVP. I was so surprised at how physical he was. He was throwing some big checks. Lafreniere just seems like the complete package, highly skilled, physical. He's not afraid to throw his weight around. And whoever gets him in the upcoming NHL draft is getting a hell of a player. Quinton Byfield, I was also impressed by. He seems like the type of guy who would go second overall. He would go first overall in some years, I think, but Lafreniere is just that good. Dylan Cousins was also great in my opinion. Nico Dawes, very interesting situation because it's very rare that you see Canada bring in a goalie that was undrafted to the World Juniors. And he went through the entire draft last year, but this season he just had a complete resurgence in the OHL for Guelph. He has a 9.39 save percentage. And because he was undrafted, I was a little questionable about him. And he started off the game a bit shaky on those first two US goals, but after the first period, he seemed to figure it out and he was much more solid as the game went on. So I'm actually not that worried about him, despite I was a little after the first period, but Nico Dawes overall, I think had a pretty solid performance. And the player that I was really interested to see this game was Jamie Drysdale, because he's a 17 year old defenseman for Canada. And it's very, very rare for Canada to bring a 17 year old defenseman to this tournament. And he is the seventh defenseman, so he didn't play that much, but when he did, I see he has offensive talent. He's over a point per game in the OHL this year as a 17 year old, which is insane. And he seems like the type of guy that has a lot of offensive upside. And when he was on the ice, I didn't see him making any huge defensive errors. So as this tournament goes on, I'm excited to see more of him because just having a defenseman that young on your World Junior roster is just so rare and I want to see just exactly what makes him so special. But overall today was just crazy around the World Juniors. You have the Czech Republic hosting opening it up by upsetting Russia 4-3. to three. That game was so intense and the way the fans there reacted to that win was just absolutely incredible. Kazakhstan pushed Switzerland real close. The Swiss squeaked out a 5-3 win against the Kazakhstan team. Kazakhstan showing that they probably did deserve to stay in this tournament and not get relegated last year. And then Sweden and Finland going to overtime. One guy in Sweden, Hoglander, scored a Michigan goal because that's a thing now that people just do. And apparently he's done it in the Swedish league a couple weeks ago. So the Michigan goal is now in international tournaments regularly, I guess. So yeah, overall, this is probably the best 
start to a World Junior Championship just in terms of excitement level all around that I've seen in my lifetime so far. And I'm very happy that Canada was able to start off with a big win, 6-4 to four, against the United States. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you like it, hit like. If you want to see more of my stuff, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Link is down below. And I will see you next time.